In this lesson, we'll enable physics in our game. Why would you want physics simulation? Well, we need things such as gravity, we need collision detection, and for those things you need to simulate physical bodies. The way this works in Phaser is as follows. You enable your physics system on a global level for your game, so that your game has this component ready for you to use, and then you have to enable individual sprites to be represented by a physical body. That's the term used in Phaser. Why are not all sprites automatically simulated as physical elements with gravity and all those fancy things? Well, because you might want to have some sprite that represents, say, the number of lives that you have, or could be a logo or some, or some icon or something like that. So you have to manually say which sprites are simulated by physics. And only those sprites can do collision detection and all those other cool things, like have velocity and have acceleration and having two things collide with each other and there will be momentum going from one element to the, and the other and all those things. So let's initiate our physics system. We'll go to our init method and we type in this.game.physics.startSystem and the system we want to start is called the arcade system. We type in phaser.physics.arcade in uppercase. The arcade system simulates everything as rectangles, which is what we want. And it's just very simple to implement, very easy to use, and not too heavy on the resource consumption side of things, which is always important, especially on the mobile phones. Um, we can define gravity on a global level. Or we can say that individual elements have a gravity with different values. In this case, we just want to set gravity for the whole game so that all elements are subject to it unless we specify otherwise, which we will have to do otherwise. Things like the floor will just um, fall, fall down with gravity. So you type, you, you access the, gra the arcade object and then dot gravity. And gravity can be in, in X or in Y or both. But we only want gravity on Y, and we want it to be downwards. So you give it a value. I'm going to give it a value of a thousand. How do you know what value to give you to give it? It's the sort of things that you learn by trial and error. So you put in a number, you'll see that it's falling really slow. Then you put in a, another number, it'll be too quick, and you'll find a number that suits your game that you find that it looks good. So um, I now have to enable a physical body on my sprites if I want them to respond to gravity and to physics in general. The way to do that is by accessing this arcade object again and using the method um, using the method enable and using the method enable then we pass the sprite as a parameter. So I'm going to do that for the ground, and I'm going to do that for the platform, and for my player. So let's put these things in place, this dot player, and restart the page, see what we have now. See that now everything is falling with gravity. And if we made gravity slower, you would see that it's just very slow which might be for some games or if you're simulating that you're on the moon or something like that. Okay, so I don't want my floor and my platforms to respond to gravity. Therefore, I have to disable gravity on them. After we enable physics on a sprite, we have a body object on that sprite that gives us access to a lot of things. You should do console.log and put in the body so that you can see in the console what the body includes. Also, look at the documentation for the arcade. So, the body gives us access to things such as velocity and, and uh, uh, mass and a lot of other physical stuff. And in this case, we can set the allow gravity flag. We can set that to false. So, in this case, my ground, for example, doesn't have gravity anymore. Why do things don't collide? They should hit each other? Well, that's only if we define so in update, and we're not doing that in this lesson. So for now, nothing touches each other. They're all physically simulated, but imagine that they're in like parallel universes, so they don't touch each other. So that's for the ground. We also want to do it for the platform. 
uh, we want to disable uh, gravity so now only our player has gravity the other thing that you want to do for those two things is to make them um, immovable example if you punch somebody on the somebody on the face you'll see that the face of the person will move towards the direction of your punch don't try that at home but that's what happens and in here if we make things collide the same thing will happen so the player will fall and it will hit the platform and then the platform will also start moving down because you gave it a momentum so we have to make them so that they cannot be moved unless of course you want to have platforms where you when you once you jump on it they start to fall down which you find in some games um, so we'll do unmovable equals true so that will make them uh, so that you cannot you cannot uh, step on them and move them downwards once we implement collision so platform immovable true okay so we have now we've we've started the physics engine you need to do that before you can start using it and then we enabled individual sprites to be part of the physics simulation we've learned how to enable gravity on a global level and how to um, disable it for some of the sprites with the ones that we don't want to fall to fall down or, or up or whichever direction your gravity is pointing on and then if we want to avoid avoid having elements when they collide to each other to have them both to have the the element that was hit moving which would happen in in in, say if you if you stand on some if you move something if you push something that that other thing will move so if we want to make it so that it doesn't move you have to make it unmovable with true 